75 percent of Americans are still going for President Joe Biden in a recent Kennepeak survey. Democratic primary poll, the poll found that 2024 Democratic candidate Marion Williamson is in second place with 13 percent of support, followed by Dean Phillips holding at 5 percent. Now, Marion Williamson is calling out the Massachusetts Democratic Party over ballot access after the state's party submitted only President Biden's name for the state's Super Tuesday presidential primary ballot per Politico. Williamson wrote on X, Dem Chair Steve Kerrigan's misplaced attempt at protecting Joe Biden robs Massachusetts Democrats of their voice and choice in the upcoming election. This action is a flagrant violation of DNC rules and processes. Meanwhile, Democratic candidate Dean Phillips took to X this week to share some of his policy views, writing, Medicare for all is a centrist, common-sense solution to our unaffordable sick care disaster. With 26 million uninsured, 90 million underinsured, the highest prices in the world, and mid-pack outcomes, we should be embarrassed. We ensure public education for all and must ensure health coverage for all, period. Journalist Mehdi Hassan responded in agreement with Phillips Post, writing, this is the centrist Dem congressman who is primarying Joe Biden. He won't win, but what he's saying about Medicare for all is 100 percent correct. If only Biden would say it, it would be morally and financially the right thing to say and would help him with progressives and young voters. Yeah. As for the Dean Phillips Medicare for all, nobody cares. He's been in Congress for years, has never signed on to this Medicare for all legislation that uh, I think Jayapal has been putting in now for like many, many congressional cycles. This is a clear effort to, at this late stage in the game, distinguish himself from Joe Biden. Nobody's buying it. It's performative, and it's a bid to get the youth vote. The youth vote, which I would add, is overwhelmingly with candidates like uh, Cornell West and Jill Stein and Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson, meanwhile, at 13 percent, we should have said 75 percent of Democrats are still going for Joe Biden, not uh, Americans overall. That's obviously not true. Um, but while Biden still has a lock on Democrats, not surprising since there's no Democratic primary, she's still holding very strong at 13 percent, which, as I pointed out many times, is way better than most of the Republican candidates on the other side of the aisle. And yet those Republican candidates get full hearing on liberal shows like MSNBC and CNN that repeatedly give them town halls, one-on-ones and the like, whereas Marion Williamson is shuttled off into a corner of the Internet and so-called free speech heroes like Elon Musk that once promised to give her at least a platform on their alternative media uh, outlets have also lied about that and declined to do so. All of that. And she's still doing so much better than Dean Phillips. It's kind of remarkable. Yeah, he should have had her on. Uh, we've obviously had her on a number of times. Happy to do so again uh, because we want to actually allow um, dissent and alternative candidates to speak their mind. Um, we've had Cornell West on. We've had Jenk on. We're, we've had Robert F. Kennedy on. And, and so forth. So I do think it's remarkable that she's managed to stay in there, despite, you're correct, the absolute, near absolute, I think, I think she's been on CNN or MSNBC maybe once or twice, but a, a near total blackout of her candidacy among mainstream and liberal media outlets, um, people's television screens they don't get to see or hear from her. Um, yeah, I mean, on the Republican side, you're, you're right that there has been much more voice given to the non-Trump people. Uh, I mean, now we're at the point where, I mean, Trump isn't at 75 percent versus all the, the rest. Um, and Nikki Haley doing OK now in some of the polling, still not anywhere, not near Trump, but, you know, getting closer there. Um, but that's not to excuse anything they're doing on the other side to absolutely silence Marianne, especially including the actual primary voting, trying to, you know, keep her off the ballot. Um, I mean, that's as Democrats' favorite new tactic. <laughs> we'll just we'll just not have people on the yeah. ballot. So we won't we won't we won't bother you. We won't sully your day with the opportunity to vote for anyone but Biden. So it's not a new tactic tactic at all. As some Green Party sure. folks have been pointing out, the Democratic Party has weaponized ballot access to extreme extents routinely. Um, for example, most recently, off the top of my head, Matthew Ho, who was running for Senate in North Carolina, uh, had to go up against Hillary Clinton attorney Mark Elias law firm uh, in their efforts to challenge every signature, every name, uh, and keep them in courts when he should have been campaigning. And of course, the Green Party doesn't have nearly as many resources as Hillary Clinton and the DNC and various arms of her in their outreach. So this is a strategy that is largely kept from the American public that has been used to continue the facade of there being only two options, no matter how unpopular those options are. Our uh, two-headed, uh, monstrous uh, 
corporate duopoly will continue to force it down our throats if people don't report on all of the ways that they are very much undermining democracy. And all the ways there are very much dissent on the issues among these other candidates, offering, you know, on the Democratic side, offering more progressive economic policies of markedly different foreign policy, obviously hitting Biden from the left on those things. Um, there is debate and dissent on foreign policy on the Republican side, too. I wish Trump was participating in these debates so we would actually know what he thinks more substantively, frankly, about uh, Ukraine and Russia and Israel-Palestine. Uh, we're hearing a lot from Nikki Haley, Vivek, and Ron DeSantis on it, but I'd like to know what Trump thinks about it. I guess we'll have to save that for the for the garden variety normal debates between him and Biden if there even are any if these two these two heads of the of the hydra could even be bothered to have a conversation with each other and to be held to account by the american people um, it, it seems like there are a lot of a lot of forces that have conspired to thwart that um, so far, but uh, we're going to get to the see. general election, and Biden's going to say, "Here, Gavin Newsom can debate on my behalf." Oh. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and Trump will say, "De sanctimonious, get on out no, here." No, no, he'd pick Vivek. Get on out he'd here. Pick Vivek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trump surrogate uh, Vivek. That does it for us for today. We're going to be taking a little bit of a holiday break, but don't worry, we will be back with you for at least part of next week. I think we're still working that out. Christmas and New Year's on a, on a Monday is uh, just throwing a wrench into everything, but we will have some fresh content for you next week. And of course, tomorrow, Jessica Burbank and Amber Duke will be with you for your regular Rising Fridays content. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. So long. Take care.